Hi guys, in the previous video we created a function to calculate age in Rust and um, this function took in three numbers, the year, the birth year, the birth month and the birth day and it output the age and we're gonna do something similar, let me just fold this function and this now I just copied this function and renamed it to hcalc1 and what this function takes, it doesn't take this function, this new function or the second variant does not take um, three numbers, but it takes one string. So birth uh, date, and that is a string. And now uh, what we have to do, basically the function as a whole stays, but what I gotta do somewhere here, I have to uh, basically, um, parse birth date and basically get out uh, out of birth date I gotta get birth month birth year and birth day and the way we do that let me start with birth year so let I just create a new variable called birth year that I'm gonna make into just to just to fit in with the whole with the other uh, types that uh, with with the whole function. I'm just gonna make it into an i64, uh, basically a 64 bit integer. And now I'm getting it started. Birth. Now I need a slice of that string. Now the string, the way that birth date is is input is the following format. I'm expecting the following format, uh, which is let me take 1980. That's the year, and then we've got the um, month 08. And then we've got the the uh, the day is 30. So I've got like four digits for uh, for the year. Then I've got two digits for the month, and then two digits for the day. Right. So if I need to parse, what I need for the birth year is to get out the first um, four digits of that of that of that of that string of that birth date string. And the way that goes is like birth. Uh, oops birth date and now I need a slice of that and the way you operate with slices is uh, remember uh, or let, let me let me let me let me put it this way a, a string is nothing but a sort of a series of, of, of numbers so basically um, each one starting with zero so that's basically index zero the nine is basically index um, one, the eight is index two, the zero is index three, and so on. So starting with zero. So to get the, the year, I would need to start at index zero, obviously. Two, now I need zero, one, two, and three. So these are the four first digits in the element zero, element one, element two, and element three. So I need to go up to four, excluding four. That's the way you set up a range. And that's, that's the birth date. The birth date is basically a range extending from element number zero up to element up to and excluding element number four. So that's, that's, the, birth, uh, that's the birth year. However, that is a string. And that's why it's red here. It's like a warning. You see, it's, is it expected to be an I-64? Because this is an I-64. But this here is a string because it's just a slice of a, of, a, of, a, of a string. So I need to change that into a number. And the way you do that is like, first of all, you need to, you trim. Now in this case, you, you don't need to trim because there's no space either before or after that slice. But I always take trim because it's sort of a safety measure because if you have user inputs and so on, you'd have uh, sometimes that, that uh, what you might call it, uh, slash, backslash end, basically that, that, uh, that new line. Or if you have some spaces, always use trim. It just takes off any, uh, yeah, junk, if you wish, uh, before and after that slice that you're interested in. Trim, and then we need to parse into a number. And then finally, you put in the error, uh, what happens if, if, you know, if, if something is wrong and let me just put a message there not a number so basically now I have created or parsed birth year out of that string and the same process is gets now done for the uh, birth month and birth day so let's just let me copy that so birth month 
is basically again an I64. Now this time the slice doesn't start from zero but starts from four because we need element number four and number five. So it goes up to element number six, excluding six, and the rest stays the same. And birth uh, day is basically starting from element number six and going up to, I don't care, you know? So basically it got starting from element six and going to the end. And here again, I could have done also like this, like starting from the very beginning up to and excluding element four. Could have been also done like this. So the, the, these are the ways to, uh, uh, you know, to um, set up, start and end of a range. Right, so now I've got those three elements and the rest of the function is as is. I don't have to change a thing. And um, if you notice before parsing that, let me just comment that stuff out. Before parsing that, you notice that all of these guys were red because they were defined. In the previous function, they were defined by the inputs. Now we don't have them here as inputs. So they were all like, you know, the compiler was complaining, like, you know, you gotta define these. And now we have, and you see now, um, the complaints are gone and it looks good. Right, so let me save that and uh, let's go over to main now in main i've already uh, done the inputs uh, th this is the old function we did in the previous video i just changed the dates because now we have the uh, 17th and uh, so that's today that guy today had his birthday today he's he's 40 today this guy's birthday tomorrow so he should be still 39 and i just copied that here um now these are the inputs here and remember, I have to convert them to string. String is a, is a is sort of a complicated thing in, in Rust, but let me let me explain that in a separate video. Let me just say in this in this case that this is not a real string, but it's sort of an str, and I have to convert it to a real string because this string, capital S string, is a, a sort of a, 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 a you know a, a global or a, a custom string. It's a sort of an object different from those str. Uh, sort of static strings and this is a sort of a static string and I changed it to this capital uh, str so that's why every time you have a um, sort of a string like this you just have to convert it to a real capital S string and that's the way I remember it anyways and um, and that's 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 how I, these, these are the inputs here and you see now if I if I just save that and uh, cargo run it And um, you see here we have the inputs. Um, let me just expand that a bit. So you see here we have first of all the 40, 40, 39, and then the 40, 39. That's the first slot. This here is the first, the first function. And the second function is again 40. 40, 39, 40, 39. So everything is working perfectly. And now we have two functions basically doing identical things, but each one taking uh, different kind of arguments. This one requires, the first one required three numbers, and the second one just required one string. So you can see here, you can use functions, uh, multiple functions, um, uh, you know, the same function multiple ways, and just, uh, you know, depending on the way you, you have your inputs, you can pick which function you can use and um, obviously you can you can now uh, you know use it as an exercise you can also have a function which takes inputs like like this you know where the uh, months and, and days are not sticking together but are like separate by the by a minus or by some any sort of character so you can you know parse it parse that stuff in a different way so you see here it's very flexible with functions um, you know you can you can you can have multiple functions doing basically the same job just taking different inputs um yeah that's that's all i got to say to that subject so like i said like uh, you can see here that that uh, that uh, we are able to to you know exploit the functionality of a function by by duplicating it and having that copy taken inputs in a different manner or a different format.